Hello, and welcome to another session of Aircraft Post's Rousseau Report. I'm Dennis Rousseau. In this session, we'll be talking about the Falcon 7X and 8X manufactured by Dassault Aviation. But first, a brief introduction. The company's been building business jets since 1965 with the introduction of the midsize Falcon 20. They subsequently went on to build many other business jets in addition to the Rafale and Mirage fighter jets, which were the first airplanes designed entirely with Dassault Systems CATIA, or Computer-Aided Three-Dimensional Interactive Application. An abundance of technology gleaned from the fighter platform is actually parlayed in the manufacture of Dassault's business jets. The 7X was announced in 2001 and began customer deliveries six years later with a backlog of over 160 aircraft. It was the first Falcon built with winglets. As well, the development program actually pushed the boundaries of production technologies. From the outset, digital models were used to validate and anticipate everything from tooling and assembly to aerodynamics and maintenance. As a result, 7X serial number one was a fully optimized product before production began. Its maintenance was considered from the start through full-scale simulations of tool handling and human interaction. Designers verified every single maintenance action resulting in future tasks already optimized. As a result, 7X operators benefit by knowing the complexity and time required for each maintenance procedure. Although the aircraft is a clean sheet design, the 7X shares the same cross section as the Falcon 2000 and 900 series, providing six feet, two inches of headroom and seven and a half feet of cabin width. Yes, there is some resemblance to the 900 series with its three engine design. However, one differentiator is the nose section where the seven panel windshield is replaced with four curved panels that contribute to aerodynamic efficiencies as well as appearance. In addition, the 7X fuselage is 10 feet longer, which translates to an additional seven feet of cabin length. The wing is 16 feet longer. The 900 is powered by Honeywell's 731-60 engines, whereas the 7X is equipped with Pratt & Whitney's 307As that have a 7,200 hour overhaul interval, or they can be operated on condition. This all translates into the range of just under 5,800 miles, which provides a 12-hour nonstop capability. Both the 900LX and later model 7X are equipped with the Easy2 flight deck, which is based on the Honeywell Primus Epic featuring four flat screen LCDs. This is the same platform used on Gulfstream's G450, 550, and 650. The easy acronym is Proprietary 2 Falcon and stands for Enhanced Avionics System. The 900 uses a conventional yoke system for flight controls, whereas the 7X uses fly-by-wire technology, which was the first application for a business jet and uses side stick controllers, similar to those found on fighter jets. Because all the computers are digital, not analog, Falcon calls this a DFCS or digital flight control system. The two sticks are not connected mechanically, so only one moves at a time. However, if both pilots make simultaneous inputs, the stick shake is a warning that only one can fly. By employing side sticks, space is freed up for pull-out tables, which make for a work area with the displays directly in front of the flight crew. There is no mechanical link between the cockpit controls and the surfaces that guide the aircraft. Computers keep the 7X on a flight path until otherwise directed by the pilots. The DFCS corrects for wind gusts and turbulence, which not only keeps the aircraft traveling on its intended path, but also smooths out the ride. In most other business jets, in takeoff configuration, if you release the back pressure on the yoke, the nose will drop, whereas the 7X is automatically trimming to maintain a constant attitude. As a result, pilot workload is cut to a fraction of what it takes to fly a conventional aircraft. Dassault has built such a high level of automation in the cockpit that most critical systems are double or triple redundant. And even if something in the system failed, it would require little, if any, crew interaction. Plus, the DFCS has a very low probability of failure. Does this technology flow into the cabin? Passengers benefit from a 6,000-foot cabin altitude at the aircraft's certified ceiling of 51,000 feet, which is quite remarkable considering early 2000s technology where most aircraft had a similar cabin altitude at 41,000 feet. Like most aircraft in the long-range category, the 7X has a forward galley and lav and optional crew rest area, a three-zone cabin and an aft passenger lavatory and baggage section. The interior is typically configured with four singles forward conference group opposite a credenza mid-cabin 
and two to Van Zaft. For those aircraft equipped with a crew rest area, it's located opposite the galley and incorporates a unique feature in that a seat is built into the berth. When the crew needs to rest, the seat back simply folds down and integrates into the berth with a curtain providing privacy. This is a standard layout in accordance with the 7X product specification. Four singles forward followed by a conference group, then the aft cabin with one single chair opposite the divan. Although as previously mentioned, the majority of operators opt for the dual divan configuration. The 7X cabin windows are two inches taller and 20% larger than those on previous Falcons. For extended missions, seating can be berthed with the conference group lowered converting to a full-size bed and the chairs in the forward cabin convert to a single sleep area. The benefit to having dual divans is you can berth to a full-size bed with one divan or a queen size using both. Opposite the entry door is the forward full-service galley and crew lav, which is electric flush. After the main cabin is the much larger passenger lav with a vacuum flush toilet, and after the lav is a 2100 cubic foot baggage compartment. A couple major options for the 7X are enhanced vision and head-up display, which costs right around a million dollars. Another is the easy to upgrade, which depending on serial number, if options such as synthetic vision and auto descent mode are added, can easily top $1 million. But when the full easy to package is incorporated, the aircraft is full fans compliant with ADSB out, CPDLC, and enhanced nav. As of January 2020, Desso had delivered 286 Falcon 7X aircraft. Its main competitor in the range and three-zone cabin category is Bombardier's Global 5000 and Gulfstream's new G500. The current market for the 7X shows 16 available aircraft, representing 5.6% of the fleet, with ask prices ranging from 18.4 to 35.5 for a 2008 and 2015 year model, respectively. There has been eight transactions, ranging from 19 million for a 2007 year model to 29 million for a 2013. In 2014, Dassault announced the Falcon 8X, a stretch version of the 7X, which was the first time they've stretched an existing model. Two 21 inch plugs were installed fore and aft of the wing route. This stretch provided a greater capacity fuselage fuel tank, two additional cabin windows on each side, and an increase of three and a half feet in cabin length. The winglets were also modified, which added to the wingspan and reduced drag. Although the 8X uses the 7X wing, Dassault engineers reduce the wing weight by 600 pounds. The Primus Epic platform is used again for the 8X and rebranded EC3, which includes synthetic vision and 3D digital radar. One of the more expensive options offered on the 8X and a first for business jets is pilot and co-pilot HUD EVS. When you put all these things together, Additional fuel, modified winglet, reduced wing weight, EC3 avionics, as well as more fuel efficient and powerful Pratt Whitney 307D engines. The 8X has about 800 miles more range, bringing it to just under 6,500 nautical miles, placing it clearly in the ultra long range business jet category. The 8X continues with the three zone cabin and similar to the 7X is typically configured with four singles in a club arrangement forward cabin, a four place conference group mid cabin, and two divans aft cabin in addition to a forward and aft lav in a forward galley. Opposite the conference group mid cabin, owners can integrate a two place divan into the credenza or remove the credenza and add two singles for a greater seating capacity. And as we saw with the 7X, the conference group can be berthed into a full size bed. Another first for business aviation and to Dassault's credit, they fuse synthetic vision, infrared, and low light imagery into a single depiction displayed on the PIC's head-up display and brand it the Combined Vision System, or CVS. The option Falcon Eye camera is noticeably different than the EVS camera on the 7X in that the sensors are slightly recessed into the nose cone for better aerodynamics and the enclosure is wider. Another major option that can be added due to the additional cabin length is a full height shower located in the F lab, which could contain enough water for a 30 minute shower. So what does all this technology cost? The 8X has a base price of $57.5 million, which is about $5 million less than a new Falcon 7X. Once a buyer adds Falcon Eye, EVS, HUD, broadband internet, electrically powered chairs and windows, galley refrigerator, you're right around $60 million plus new, not to mention an increase in basic operating weight. 
As of January 2020, there are now 57 ADEXs in service. Of those, there are three available aircraft on the pre-owned market, all 2016 year models, with one asking $47 million and the other two at make offer. The main competitors to the ADEX are the Bombardier Global 6000 and Gulfstream's new G600, as the G550 is nearing the end of production. Thank you for tuning in, and join us in our next session when we take a look at Gulfstream's G650. I'm Dennis Rousseau with Aircraft Post's Rousseau Report. Thank you.